up guys, we're going to be doing a deck profile for Dark Lords, as you can see by the title, we're going to be doing a more competitive version of this particular deck, uh, as you know, through playtesting, I've actually been uh, doing pretty successfully here, uh, utilising different cards in this, so it's much more different than my previous builds of Dark Lords, uh, and somehow the playstyles are also incredibly more versatile in this as well, so... Uh, right off the bat, we're going to be playing three copies of Dark Lord Ixor, our main draw power for this deck. Really amazing, uh, just loving this card. Playing three copies of Superbia, also a really nice card, uh, our trade-in target, so definitely a really nice choice for the deck as well at three copies. Playing three copies of Nastin, an easy normal summon, I'm sorry, easy special summon just by uh, getting rid of two Dark Lord cards from your hand. So that's quite nice. Playing two copies of Zerato, basically our Raigeki for the deck and uh, also a rank 8 target as well. Uh, we're also playing a Tezcal Poker as our hand trap option. Uh, just a bit of protection, same case with Amdus, allowing you to bring back Tezcalipoca from the graveyard. Um, otherwise, you could just take out Amdus to put in a second copy of this instead. So, uh, definitely your choice there. But uh, we are playing two copies of Archlord Christia. Our deck is easily able to turbo out these uh, Dark Lords. As you can see, we're not playing Ukabark, uh, simply because... Uh, if we have too many Dark Lords, then we can't turbo them in the graveyard. Keep in mind, we do need exactly four in the graveyard to special summon out Christia. As a result of that, um, we want to minimize the amount of Dark Lords because we can easily just get a lot of them into the graveyard uh, with no trouble at all. But of course, uh, Christia can also be brought back with Superbia's effect, so you have different options you can go for as well. But that pretty much concludes the monsters, so let's move on to spells. So, on to spells, we are obviously going to be playing three copies of Dark Lord Contact, our monster reborn for the deck, and just really amazing, I can't imagine a deck without three of these. We are also playing three copies of Banishment, basically allowing you to just add any Dark Lord card from deck to hand, including our spells and traps. So definitely working out really amazingly there. Again, wouldn't reduce it at all. We are playing three copies of Allure of Darkness. Now, of course, we want uh, Dark Lords in a graveyard, but sometimes uh, we don't need all these Dark Lords in a graveyard. We just need four of them to focus more on Christia. So as a result of that, we are going to be playing three copies of Allure just to keep them banished. But there are some times we need to also get some in the graveyard. We're going to be playing three copies of Trade-In, doing the job there to discard and allowing us to also draw into two cards as well. Definitely works really well to try and actually draw into our Christia. A Monster Reborn to actually extend our plays and to end things off with spells, we're playing two copies of uh, Caught by the Grave. Now, if you remember in the uh, previous Dark Lord deck profile we did a while back, uh, we were actually playing three copies of Caught by the Grave. In this particular one, it's not too big of an issue. Um, I think it's okay uh, because Archlord Christia can easily summon himself and the opponent can't really do anything with a hand trap on that anyway. So with that being said, two called by the grave definitely is more than enough. But that's it for the spells, let's move on to traps. So on to the traps, we're playing two copies of the Sanctified Dark Lord. Um, a really amazing card to help negate your opponent's monsters effects, so definitely quite nice there. Uh, two is more than enough in this particular variant. We're also playing two copies of Rebellion, allowing you to destroy your opponent's uh, monsters. So definitely nice over there. We are also playing two copies of uh, Dark Lord Enchantment, allowing you to steal your opponent's monsters. And uh, keep in mind, the monsters you steal can actually attack. So this is why it's actually better than um, Mind Control. Not to mention, it could also be activated with your Dark Lord monster effects as well. So had a few people actually uh, message me asking why I didn't play Mind Control over Dark Lord Enchantment. I mean, it's pretty obvious why Dark Lord Enchantment is significantly better than Mind Control in this Dark Lord deck. Uh, but to end things off, we're going to be playing two copies of Back to the Front. Um, we have a lot of big defenses with some of these Dark Lords, particularly Ixchul, which has uh, 2,900 
defense. So back to the front is definitely quite nice because uh, it is also chainable if your opponent ever tries to destroy this card. Um, and I think it's just significantly better than um, Monster Reborn, so or Call of the Haunted, sorry. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much going to conclude the particular trap card, so let's move on to the extra deck. So, on to the extra deck, it's actually going to be the same as last time, we're going to be playing Seven Sins, Pain Gainer, and uh, Ravenous Tarantula. We are also going to be playing the uh, Super Dreadnought, Gangridae, 81, Draco Sack, Big Eye, Red Eyes, Aegeon, 68. Sorry, bump the camera, and these two as well. But that's pretty much for the deck profile, so hope you guys enjoy this, and hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you next time.